Hey guys, we are back with another lab upgrading slash downsizing video. Today it's about the visuals. We are downsizing my monitor. So the 24 inch monitor, it had to go. It just took up too much space. Also in the background, I've installed some RGB strips to yeah set the mood and to make it look a little bit nicer on camera. I reached out to you perfect and they sent me one of their portable monitors. I received the monitor for free. This is not a paid video, but I do get to keep the product. It is the U color A17 and it's only 15.6 inches, but it has a 4K resolution, which is what I asked for because my entire workflow now is in 4K from the camera to capturing footage from the retro PC through the Retro Tink 4K. I like how everything is connected with a single USB-C cable. The mini PC has a USB-C 4 port at the back. It supplies power as well as display port video signal. The monitor has an IPS panel. So the colors are quite accurate, which I was after for video editing. And it's got good viewing angles as well. Better than what you get with a TN panel, for example, or with a VA panel. On the right side, we have two USB-C ports. There's a HDMI port and an audio port. With the audio port, I found that it struggles to drive headphones. Even the headphones that I'm using, they only have 32 ohms of impedance. The volume was not very loud, so keep that in mind. The speakers are so-so. Uh, it's better than having no speakers, but of course, it's nothing compared to a dedicated sound bar or dedicated PC speakers. On the left side, we have a USB to go port. There's a power LED, a power button, and another four buttons to navigate the on-screen menu, which we will take a closer look later in this video. In the box, we're getting a 30 watt power supply, two USB-C cables, and one HDMI cable. Let's have a look at the on-screen menu, input select. We can toggle between the two USB-C ports and HDMI, audio adjust, volume and mute. View mode, we got standard, game, movie, web, text and mono. Color adjust, so I'm gonna go into this menu and dig a bit deeper. Contrast and brightness, color temperature, uh, bluish, native, warm, user mode, color space, RGB and YUV, color range, full range, limited range, and also HDR between off, auto, and 2084. Next, we have manual image adjust. Let's dig a little bit deeper. Sharpness, then we've got a setting for the blue light filter. Aspect ratio, look at that. We've got some retro features, four by three and even five by four. That's nice to see. Black stabilization, I had to Google what that does and run some tests. It basically boosts the details in the shadows. So maybe if you're a competitive gamer, that is something for you. And then we've got uh, DCR, that is dynamic contrast ratio. I wouldn't use that. And finally, under setup menu, let's have a look here. You can select language, information. We've got the on-screen display timeout, power indicator, if you want the LED to uh, indicate power or not, low power mode, sleep timer, and here you can reset your settings. Something I want to mention is I found one little discrepancy on the website. So here we've got the Uperfect A17 and initially under FreeSync, it had a yes here. So I contacted them. This monitor definitely does not support FreeSync. And later I found also in the online PDF user manual, it shows a screenshot here. These screenshots don't match the monitor. so. I believe at some point they swapped out the model and maybe forgot to update the specifications and the PDF manual. For example, here it mentions FreeSync and then uh, choose on or off and FreeSync is only available if the display is in game mode. But I tried that on this monitor, no FreeSync and I also checked with Uperfect. They confirmed that this monitor does not support FreeSync. So in the future, uh, I hope they can do a slightly better job at keeping the online documentation accurate. 
It also comes with a soft case that doubles as a stand, but I wanted something to have the screen up and away from the desk. At first I bought a monitor arm and it did a good job at uh, raising the monitor up, but it was just too bulky. So in the end I sent it back and I bought a very simple VESA mount and I just used some cable ties to mount it to the pegboard. Uh, going forward I will just get some screws and some washers and mount it a little bit more uh, reliably. But yeah, at the moment it looks pretty good. The desk area is enlarged, improved and yeah, so far I've produced a couple of videos using this setup and yeah, it's doing the job pretty well. With prices, they can always change. At the time of producing this video, you're looking at 280 USD. We might have discount coupon codes, I'm not sure. Check the video description for more information. All in all, I'm pretty happy with this setup. Maybe the size is a little bit too small for my old eyes. Uh, and maybe I should have asked for a 17 inch or 18 inch. But apart from that, I'm pretty happy. I haven't noticed any flaws or any odd issues. But if you have specific questions, well, this is your chance. Leave them down below in the comments. I'll be using this monitor for a while. So it's very easy for me to run some tests. And yeah, that's it for this one. There will be more upgrade videos coming soon. And as always, keep an eye out for Friday for our regular retro PC gaming content. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And I shall see you soon with another one.